in this particular session we are going to dive into understanding the incident response entire setup how you are going to set it up and for this the primary reference which i have taken for this particular session uh, from a governance perspective is we are going to talk about nist special publication 861 Currently, it is into the release to uh, policy. There are three things which you must have. Number one is policy. You should have a central policy, which actually should say that we are going to have a holistic monitoring mechanism and then we are going to respond to that. It should be very clearly stated and it has to be management approved as well. You need to get the management approval on the policy. It should also specify, you know, scope purpose okay then what is the objective of the entire program it should also talk different type of definitions related to incidents for example when we say a event a event can be a good event or a bad event not every event is an incident you need to understand not every event is an incident only adverse event are then incident which have a negative consequences for you like this all those kind of definitions should also be there in your policy very very clearly it has to be defined incident response policy should also talk about prioritization now what is this prioritization see all the incidents which are happening in a company they are not all super critical. So, they may have different level of impact when these kind of thing happens. So, we cannot take these incident with the same. So, you need to give some kind of prioritization and your policy should also be able to capture KPI and KRI so that you are able to understand the performance of the entire incident response plan and this thing should also be tried to make them automated as well at the same time. Okay and then how the reporting will happen how the communication will happen because in case of incident sometimes you have to communicate within your company sometimes you also have to communicate outside your company as well let's say media let's say law enforcement let's say your other incident response companies uh, uh, teams in the other other companies a lot many people right so your policy should be a holistic policy which should answer all these kind of questions once you have the central policy the next part is how you are going to define the plan now what is the plan that is your incident response plan you should have a holistic well structured incident response plan so that as and when any kind of incident happens your team is able to take care of particular incident in a very structured manner because when the incident happens there will always be some kind of panic you need to come out of that panic and follow a structured approach so that you are top of your game all the time then your entire plan should be also aligned with your business strategy and uh, goals because if your plan says something else and the company strategy and other things are saying something else it may not work out it has to be in perfect alignment and all your business plans all your incident response plan it has to be management approved and obviously plan should also include a communication tree because communication plays a very important part in your entire incident response thing you need to communicate with a lot of stakeholder so you need a clear communication plan apart from this you will also be defining kpi kri and also how you are going to mature this incident response plan over a period of time there has to be very clearly goal and you can say roadmap defined for the same then once you define the incident response plan because this is going to be a high level plan you need further procedures so these procedures will go fine grained and for each and every activity you might be defining sops standard operating procedures now these might be some technical uh, processes which are there uh, you might uh, have some you can say uh, technical checklist 
some activities and you can also have some forms uh, which you are going to fill up you are also going to have some blue books to follow that is what comes under the uh, layer of procedures so whenever you are setting up your incident response uh, entire plan first thing is set up policy which is a holistic policy approved by top management after that uh, bring out your incident response plan and under plan there might be several procedures which you have to follow one more thing i am again and again saying and very important uh, um, very important thing and they may test you during the exam also that is communication part in the entire incident response you are going to communicate with several parties let's say some incident happened you might need to inform your ism to your vendors you might be uh, liable to inform to uh, law enforcement for example uh, some uh, some incident happened related to privacy and you are under the scope of gdpr you need to inform them within a time bound manner right that is very important in some cases you might be serving some customers so you need to keep them also in, right and especially for media you need to educate your people uh, your general staff not to directly interact with the media company should have a particular position who takes care of all these things uh, you know passing this particular information to the media because it has to be properly crafted as well and it should not create any kind of panic at the same time we are not going to hide things but entire thing is that it should not create any kind of panic so these are the major things when it comes to governance uh, another thing is the team how the incident response team should look like so one thing is for sure there is going to be a core team and there is going to be some extended team as well because you need to work with a lot of stakeholder might be legal and other people so you need to have people designated who are from other teams and as and when there is an incident where you need their help you can pull them up and the core team will be a pure technical team who might be doing all this incident management then you also need to understand that in some companies the incident response team right might be central that means a central team will take care of all the incident happening throughout the company that is normally good for small organizations but in certain cases it might also be that you have distributed teams okay distributed teams means you have different different teams for different different locations and then you are coordinating between them and when we say coordination right then we also have coordinating team as well coordinating team so you might have heard something called as csirt so this is nothing but an advisory team or a overall governance team which takes care of you know who is able to drive all those all those reason specific teams and those kind of in some cases uh, based on your company situation the entire incident response is handled by your internal employee so you have a dedicated team for that. okay it might be uh, like that in some case it is partially outsourced for example in a company you are outsourcing the level one and then level two level three is managed by your company that is also one of the structure which many many companies feel in case you do not have the expertise at all then you can completely go for complete outsourcing as well so based on your company situation in which company you are working and based on the uh, availability of expertise and all of this we can go with any of these kind of stuff right make sure the, that the incident response team uh, is available you have to make an arrangement to make them available 24 bar 7 all the time and obviously it is a stressful work so you need to also take care of role segregation as well because you might be that you are lending them into doing some kind of investigation also so you also have to implement separation of duties also there and make sure that people are well trained uh, because this is a very technical kind of work and expertise kind of work that is where you want that your team should be highly expert all the time so do care of all these kind of governance things whenever you are setting up your incident response plan i hope that gives you a good sense right with that said let's dive into the next part the first step into setting up the entire incident response plan is the preparation plan 
your team would be needing a lot of things to execute the entire incident response plan number one uh, contact tree you might be contacting with a lot of people inside your company outside your company so you need to have proper updated contacts which we also call it as key escalation points also within your company also you need to have key uh, key people name and their phone numbers so that as and when there is a need for escalating a particular uh, incident in a given situation you can do that then there has to be some kind of tool which will help you to document and track the entire incident so many companies have service now tool many have jira platform tools and so many tools across which we use every incident which comes in has to be documented it might be given a incident number that is also very very important then you also need to make sure that your incident response team also is given some kind of communication channel for example you give them some kind of phone so that they are available 24 bar 7 your incident response team might be communicating with multiple parties and they might also be communicating within your team also so make sure that all the communication for them is encrypted as per the federal information processing standard there is certain algorithm which they have defined that that should be used to encrypt the traffic then as and when required you also need uh, some kind of collaboration quick collaboration like for example the team want to set up a p1 call uh, then they should have a mechanism to quickly set up and inform the people how they are going to set up a p1 call or go into a war room kind of situation right and then this team your incident response team might also be handling a lot of uh, investigations also and when they are handling investigations you need to make sure that they have sufficient storage uh, you know is they have sufficient storage and i would say secure storage to preserve all the evidences that is also very very much required so that's your uh, i would say the preparation phase once you have done all this preparation you have your defined your policy and all these kind of mechanism around the next thing is let's say now preparation is done now let's dive into the entire thing when the incident actually happens let's say there is a deviation what you are going to do so in that let's talk about detection and analysis part okay first and foremost you need to identify what are the attack uh, vectors what are the most common attack vectors what are attack vectors that means most common incident which actually have a negative impact on the company uh, thing what are those for example some sometimes you may see a disgruntled employee who want to do something bad it might be somebody using a external media sometimes there are some web related attacks somebody trying to uh, perform a spl injection or a cross site scripting attack there are some phishing emails uh, there are some kind of spams also coming in which you are not able to stop at the gateway level and they are happening sometimes people are trying to impersonate as well or in some cases people might steal some kind of assets so all these attack vectors try to think in advance and put forward all those kind of things which can happen brain dump and then for each and everything you need to have a blue book what we do for each and every then it is very important very much important right that you have certain uh, you can say indicators you have some indicators which are being defined which will tell you if there is a particular incident which is happening so indicators can be defined into two categories one is called as precursor so precursor means what precursor is a indication that a attack may happen you are able to see certain symptom which actually indicate that a that the attack is about to happen so it's a kind of proactive kind of indication which is telling you yes something is going to happen for example your web server logs they are indicating that somebody is trying to run a scan isn't it somebody is trying to run a vulnerability scan or uh, let's say there is a threat from a threat group so these are kind of precursor event which are coming to you and you know this way you will be get ready in the advance so before the even before the incident happens you can take certain actions by using the precursors on the other side there are something called as indi indicators so these indicators means they will tell you if the compromise has happened 
For example, there is something called as indicator of compromise. There is something also called as indicator of attack. So, first indicator of attack will come and then indicator of compromise, compromise will come. So, you need to keep all these indicators also with you. For example, your IDS giving you a warning that a buffer overflow attack is happening or your antivirus software is telling you that there is an infection which is spreading across or a particular network firewall giving you a, a sign that uh, a DDoS attack is happening. All these are kind of called as indicators, indicator of compromise or indicator of attacks. So, you need to make sure that these particular things are very well defined to make sure that you have the detection capabilities. Apart from all the tools and all, you need to have uh, you know these things defined detection capabilities the very next thing let's say you have already now defined all the detection capabilities now the next part will be analysis phase when we say analysis analysis is also triage. now what is triage that means if a particular incident happens let's say some kind of event has happened it might be a good event it might be a bad event there has to be somebody who can actually take that particular event, take care of it, go through and investigate that thoroughly and tell you, okay, is it false or if the particular alarm is genuine. So, this is also not a straightforward process. There will be a lot of false positive in the company. There, there are not sufficient indicator of compromise or indicator of uh, attacks, obviously, right? And in some cases, you have data, but that particular data is not conclusive. So, this is where, you know, triage plays a very, very important part, right? So, always be mindful of that. Second thing, documentation play a very important role. By the time you are starting diving into this and analyzing the entire incident, the main thing is how you are going to document it. You need to document the entire scope what is under that particular incident which all systems has been impacted what all network applications has been impacted right networks and systems so that scope has to be very well defined also right and like who created the particular incident or what actually lead to that particular incident then what tools we are using we also use something called as profiling you know what is profiling profiling is a system of measurement which will tell you okay how the normal things happens in your company if you know that normally i am getting uh, you know uh, 5 gb of data which is uploaded from my website to a certain website on a everyday basis you know you have already done the profiling now one single day you see uh, you see suddenly 50 gb of data going in that means it's an indicator for you that something has happened isn't it so that is where you need to understand the normal behavior the normal work behavior then you also need to make sure that the appropriate log retention is there all the time so that if the log itself is not retained because sometimes the uh, the particular evidence or a particular incident evidence is spread across multiple uh, devices and let's say in one devices you are going to retain data for last three months in in another one you are keeping data only for one week that can be a problem man for you then you also need to correlate the event correlate the event so this is where your correlation rules correlation rules play a very very important part in the entire thing then time synchronization is another important part if your time is not synchronized or uh, the attacker is able to play with your time they will definitely go and change the time so that they can defeat the detection list. then it is also very very important that there has to be a strong knowledge what is knowledge base for example, uh, now I am I am an L1 analyst. Uh, there is some incident coming to me. If I am not able to see quickly through a list of open ports, okay, what are what this port refers to, or what can be the common uh, things which goes in, you know that guy will not be able to act so efficiently. So all that is required during the uh, triage field. Then all the details about the incident has to be documented at the same and all actions should be time stamped throughout the incident response time stamp play a very very important part which will contain uh, you know uh, the summary of entire thing 
who take the action at what time to, they took the action and in many case if the particular case is going for some kind of investigation you need to also keep the chain of custody document as well so a lot actually going in the entire then based triage right the particular incident will then go for prioritization means what if you are able to see that a particular uh, incident is leading to a uh, you know functional your company is going to be down for next two days because of that particular incident or a particular information is kind of stolen or there is a informational impact the amount of recovery right all these some of the these are some of the parameter which we always take to actually prioritize a particular incident now when we say incident prioritization you are going to tag it as p1 means highest priority or you can call it as p2 p3 p4 p5 whatever it depends on different companies some have p1 p2 p3 some have p1 to p5 okay and they have to define sla for each and every one for example if there is a p1 incident you need to mitigate with four then p2 incident can be covered in one day p3 can be covered within one week then it is one month and let's say few months like that you are going to define the sla for then it is also very important that the incident is notified to the respective team also in some cases you need to uh, to take the incident directly to your ceo if it is p1 or head of security or local information security officer there might be certain system owners who are actually owning their asset and some kind of incident has happened you might be also needing to inform the hr team because hr is leading the people right and this might involve some kind of people public affair media uh, legal uh, authorities so all those kind of things you also need to define in your entire notification okay so that is the part then when your detection and analysis part is over what is the next part so next comes in your incident response containment now what is contain containment means you are trying to isolate that particular system to prevent any further kind of impact okay this will also give you some time so this will try to prevent further impact as well as you also get some uh, to uh, remediate the same thing because once you are able to contain then you can peacefully think okay now what we do in the entire containment as well you need to have some decision making involved also what kind of decision making comes into containment number one should i shut down the system or should i disconnect the system or i should disable some kind of functions all these kind of things will always come in so you have to have people who are able to react good they have a predefined kind of checklist which they can follow and take certain kind of actions so incident response is all about how proactively you are going to define your things that is where the real success lies for the entire incident response then you need to also prepare strategies if there is a uh, you know uh, if if there is a particular incident which is very critical the strategy of containment will then the next part is coming is called as eradicate so this is where we are trying to fix the system or the tool or the service whichever it is for example you are going to format a system clean format a system okay or if there is a malware you are going to clean the malware right so that is what is coming as eradicate idea is how quickly we are able to con containment happened now after containment you are able to fix the system as soon as possible it is not a long term approach but immediate action which you can take once that is over the very next part is recovery now in this recovery phase or we also call it as remediation in the recovery phase or you can call it as remediation phase we are trying to restore the system to the normal restore to normal operation that is the entire intent of the recovery part so it might be that you have to recover some data you might have to rebuild the system from the scratch you might be required to update some kind of patching and then test out the system before you go and put it back in the production you want to bring the business as usual you are trying to bring the system as usual back to shape that is your recovery once the recovery phase is done 
the last phase comes in and that is where many people feel like now there is nothing required because already things are done actually not the last part here is very very important which is called as the lesson learned phase or we call it as post incident phase it is also called as lesson learned why this particular phase is so important because this will give you a lot of intel to fine tune your security posture so that your intent should be if a incident has happened once in my company it should not happen again how can you do that you need to perform the root cause and what has happened exactly at what time something has happened how it has happened or how we were able to detect the thing or how we are able to uh, deal with the particular incident in the most effective manner and what information was required during the entire incident handling uh, if something has contributed to some kind of delay what was that particular reason and with whom uh, you were able to share some information let's say within your firm or outside your firm or what corrective action you have taken all of those things will come here in the part of RCA root cause analysis you are going to ask yourself a lot of questions then what kind of precursor or indicator of compromise or indicators right uh, you are going to monitor in the future so that the same thing does not repeat in the future also that should be your intent right if you need some kind of additional tool that should be you should be able to get it because uh, you might require some new tools to monitor and that should be available uh, this lesson learned is if the if management review meetings are not happening then this lesson learned is of no use because end of the day there has to be some tangible outcome of this entire stuff so that you are able to continually improve right so for you need to maintain data for your entire lesson learned that is where you are going to document it maybe in a central sharepoint site or this is normally called as knowledge uh, management then this particular the outcome of this particular data about lesson learned should also feed into your risk assessment process so that uh, we are able to check those things while we are doing the regular periodic risk assessment so that the things are not happening in the, in the entire stuff you need to monitor also the entire incident response plan so you are going to define kpi and kri where the kpi indicates the effectiveness of the process key, key risk indicator actually is a trend which can be future looking trend and it gives you an indication that some kind of risk is increasing and at some point of time this will go beyond the acceptable level of the company. so that is what you have to define this entire thing okay team so just a quick uh, rewind of what have we covered in this particular section so i gave you a good picture of that we need to have policy plan and procedure defined for the incident response number one thing then we have also understood uh, you know the different phases of the incident response so it all started with the preparation then comes your detect and analysis phase then we have discussed about uh, containment that we are going to contain the particular incident and we are then going to eradicate also recovery and then the last step so that is post incident act that is where we have discussed about lesson learned so i think this entire session might be helpful to you to give you a complete view of the entire incident response in alignment with uh, nist a special publication 863 revision sorry 61 revision 2 right so this is the entire guidance from nist on this particular thing